This Reddit post was made on December 22nd, 2018 by you slash I ran out of room to write and asks a peculiar question. Which mystery industry is the largest buyer of glitter? The post outlines the context of this question. It appears that there's a lot of glitter being purchased by someone who would prefer to keep the public in the dark about glitter's presence in their products. He links to a New York Times article written by Katie Weaver on December 21st, the day prior. In it, Weaver interviews Miss Dyer, a manager at the sinister sounding glitter company Glitterex. The interview starts off slow and mundane, with courtesy questions such as, what is the history of Glitterex and how is glitter made? But when it comes to the topic of buyers, Miss Dyer's tone changes. It reads, When I asked Miss Dyer if she could tell me which industry served as Glitterex's biggest market, her answer was instant. No, I absolutely know that I can't. I was taken aback. But you know what it is? Oh God, yes, she said, and you would never guess it. Let's just leave it at that. I asked if she would tell me why she couldn't tell me. Because I don't want anyone to know that it's glitter. If I looked at it, I wouldn't know it was glitter. No, not really. Would I be able to see the glitter? Oh, you'd be able to see something, but it's... Yeah, I can't. I asked if she would tell me off the record. She would not. I asked if she would tell me off the record after this piece was published. She would not. I told her I couldn't die without knowing. She guided me to the automotive grade pigments. So this begs the question, what industry could possibly need that much glitter and why would they want to keep it a secret? Let's delve in. Part two, conspiracy theories. Commenters flocked to the post, the top comment perhaps the most succinct of them all. A simple, this will haunt me. Another points out a curious line in the article. If I looked at it, I wouldn't know it was glitter. No, not really. That right there has me baffled. Other commenters were quick to suggest that perhaps the US military were involved somehow. After all, if there was to be a secretive buyer, who better than an industry known for its depraved creativity and seemingly infinitely deep pockets? U slash Mark makes fun extrapolates on this idea. He says, During the Iraq conflict, the US dumped materials out of planes to cause problems with electrical devices in the countries we were attacking. This seems logical. Annoying, disruptive metal materials used to wreak havoc. Sound familiar? Mark makes fun is in fact referring to soft bombs, a special type of bomb utilised by the US during the Iraq wars, which were dropped over war zones with the intent of immobilising enemy communications and were named after their minimal effect on human life. They would work by spreading an incredibly fine, chemically treated mist of particles over air insulated high voltage transformers and power lines. This would have the effect of causing short circuits by providing a path for the electricity to short to. However, there is a far darker side to this theory. The use of these bombs has been attributed to disturbing water supplies and sewage treatment, causing the deaths of hundreds of civilians. So, is the humble glitter particle both entertaining America's youth while taking out their sworn enemies with a bit of collateral? It would be a grim but far too real reminder of the duality of warfare, if so. What's more is this wouldn't be the only use of glitter for the Goliath machine of the US military. Fighter jets are equipped with chaff, Millions of tiny aluminium coated fibres whose reflective properties boggle guided missiles and radar systems. It really is starting to seem that glitter is a highly logical choice for the US to use. Another popular theory is that glitter is being inserted into commercial explosives to be spread into the air when detonated. U slash Ray Doctor explains this idea that they are used as microtagons. Multi-layered microglitter that can be used to identify the blast effects of an explosion and identify the manufacturer and batch trace it. There's even an entire website dedicated to this application. www.microtracesolutions.com has previews of this kind of device and it looks a whole lot like glitter. So, now that we've gone over all the ways glitter can indirectly kill and maim you, what about some less morbid theories about its use? What if you had glitter embedded in your face right now? Many suggested that a corporate scheme was occurring here. Beauty products use microplastics as filler in their products to fill in the pores on your face to give the impression of smoother skin. These microplastics are absurdly bad for the environment and often pour into the ocean and cause unimaginable damage to marine life. So what if these corporations were using glitter as a substitute to rid themselves of liability? Think about it. If you are called out on it, just claim it adds sparkle to your skin cream or an extra zing to your hair product and bam, absolved of wrongdoing. 
it wouldn't be the first time a company has used sneaky loopholes to retain plausible deniability. A deleted user provided an amazing rundown of the properties of glitter in his response. What if the buyer was more interested in the science behind the flakes rather than the shine? Scientists are fascinated by glitter because of its cling ability. They don't actually know what makes them stick so well. So can we eliminate clothes and anything that comes into contact with any liquids? He goes on to quote the article and states that glitter takes on fluid qualities that make it hard to peel glitter off smooth surfaces, which we all know too well after suffering through our six-year-old cousin's birthday party. Could glitter be used for deep state weather modification? Let me explain. U slash Occam's shaving cream puts it best. Clingability. Drop large amounts of glitter at high altitudes. What might it cling to? Water molecules. And that would create clouds. Clouds are a condensed collection of water molecules that clump together and then emit precipitation or rain. What if glitter was used as a catalyst for this clumping in order to stimulate the weather? U slash Bader Meinhof seemed to think so, stating, I am very familiar with the application. Selective rain generation. Finely sieved potassium iodide slash silver iodide allows for substantial surface area loading when mixed and dispersed with 150 micron glitter particles throughout the troposphere. It has connotations with the infamous High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP, run by DARPA. This was a high power radio frequency transmitter that was used to excite the ionosphere to analyse weather patterns. Though its power is in reality orders of magnitude less than that of a single lightning strike, many speculate that this excitation of the ionosphere could trigger changes in the weather, effectively weaponizing it. Therefore, there is a certain link between this and the use of glitter in cloud seeding and brings into question its use for secretive government projects. And what's more, could this also be what we see high in the skies being dumped from planes? Known as chemtrails, many believe these to be poisoning chemicals ordered by the government for mind control or population control. But what if instead it was a shiny cloud of humble glitter particles? Or is this all a distraction from what's really going on? Nevertheless, any modification of the weather and the troposphere is bound to make conspiracy theorists flock, no matter whether the intention is to sabotage the enemy or water some plants during a drought. So, what is the answer to this mysterious question? Well, it's impossible to know, but there's a few things we can consider to inform our conclusion. The soft bombs that destroyed power lines mentioned in the beginning were made out of graphite, not the aluminium metallized polyethylene terephthalate that Glitterex use. So unless the US has changed their technique, I doubt it would be that. And the concern about microplastics? Well, they don't actually give a shit, so I doubt it's that either. That leaves chaff for fighter jets and cloud seeding as possible options, and both seem valid and scary. Nevertheless, the mystery of glitter is still open and alive, and I encourage you to look into it yourself. Or it could just be for paint. That's it for this r slash unresolved mysteries video, and I bid you farewell.